Hello, uh, my name is Jessie and we're going to be painting this lovely peacock feather tonight that we're calling Bohemian Blue. Um, so you can just follow along and paint right on with me. Um, to get started, we're going to take our fancy paint palettes here and get our background done first. So background first, foreground later. For my background, I'm using, um, I mean, throughout the painting, I'm gonna use a lot of blue. So I've got some blue. I'm going to need a little bit of black, not too much, and maybe a little white too, just for variety. Um, you do not have to paint your background blue, by the way, you can do lots of different colors would go with this as well, if it matches your decor better. Um, the pink, peach range of color would look nice with this. Um, uh, even like a neutral kind of gray or black or anything like that would go well also. So choose your adventure as far as, far as your background color goes. Okay, so I'm getting my largest brush and I'm dunking it in some water. Now, for some reason, what I have on hand right now is this is my largest brush, which is not big enough for this uh, canvas, but that's okay. We're gonna make it work anyway. Um, dunking my brush in water is gonna help my paint spread a little bit easier. Um, so I'm gonna just scooch my paint towards the middle a little bit and then scoot a little bit of black in there too. And then with up and down vertical strokes, I'm gonna start filling up this canvas. And I am not going to worry about it covering um, smooth or solid. I actually want the texture. It almost, when you use, um, when you use the different blues, it kind of, especially with the texture of the canvas, it kind of looks like denim almost. I need a little more water. So I'm just gonna keep dipping into my blacks and my blues. I'm gonna fill up this canvas. The thinner that your layers are, the quicker it will dry. And we do kind of need this to dry in order to be able to paint that peacock feather. So I can just make sure I don't put it on too thick. I don't want it big and gloppy because then it's gonna take forever to dry. And uh, that just, you know, isn't always fun to sit around watching paint dry. So I'm making sure all of my strokes are going in the same direction. That's gonna kind of help make this uh, a little bit of a distressed effect with our, with our background here. And if you were using maybe different grays and blacks, um, it would kind of look like almost like old driftwood. Um, if you were to use browns, it would look kind of like old leather. It's just, it's just a really kind of antiqued look if you do these up and down vertical strokes with different, different variations of one color, I guess is what we're going for. Kind of a monochromatic type of a thing. Um, monochromatic means one color plus black and white. Mono means one, chroma means color, right? So monochromatic is gonna be one color plus black and or white. Okay, we're getting through it. If you wanted a lighter blues in the background, that could work too. Um, we just mostly want to go for contrast um, because our peacock feather is rather bright. Um, it means it means that those uh, bright colors will contrast against either dark colors for our background or light colors for our background. We don't want them to compete for attention. 
Okay. Up and down, you'll also notice, and I say this every time, you'll notice as I'm painting, especially for a large area, um, painting is a shoulder movement, not a wrist arm movement. It'll take a really long time if you're only moving your wrist and arm, but if you move your whole arm from the shoulder, um, it goes quicker and you will find that you have just more control in general. Almost there. Hopefully you are too as you're painting along with me. Sometimes I purposely use a smaller brush to cover a big canvas because I tend to paint a little faster than the average Joe and this gives people a chance to catch up if I handicap myself with a small brush. So hopefully that's working. Okay, painting, painting. As I'm getting towards the edge, I think I'm probably gonna keep uh, dipping into my black. Almost there. Uh, if you'd like, you can also paint the edges of your canvas with the same background color. Uh, painting the edges of your canvas will help you be able to just hang this right on the wall, directly on the wall without having to worry about framing it. Um, it'll make it look nice and finished so that you can display it wherever you would like. And while, while those colors are still nice and wet on your palette, this would be a good time to do that. If you have time. Okay. The background is done. All right. Okay. So I've got my background done and um, that way I can move on to the next thing which would be to kind of give myself um, a little bit of guidelines for what I want the peacock feather to look at, like. Um, I'm not gonna draw every single little line. I'm not gonna worry about that. I just need a few general guidelines to help myself out here. So um, I'm gonna switch to a thinner pointier brush and I will dip that in the water. And let's see, I want a color that I can see, but that um, won't show up too much because I don't wanna spend a ton of time on this outline. Um, so I think I'm actually gonna just mix up kind of a light blue here would be a good outlining color. So um, I just scooched some of my blue over and then I mixed it with a little bit of the white I have here. And I just want to make sure it's light enough um, that I can see it. A little bit of water uh, mixed in with that will thin it out so it spreads nice and evenly. And I'm hoping that the camera can see this too. But let's go ahead and start a nice little uh, guideline for ourselves. So I'm seeing that the feather starts kind of down here and it curves up. So I want it to end about in the middle, actually. So I'll go here and I'll curve it down. And here's a tip, anytime you're doing lines, whether it's with a paintbrush or a pencil or a marker or anything, um, with your eyes, don't watch yourself make the line because it's gonna make you nervous, it's gonna make you shaky. Um, you will have a much, much cleaner, smoother, better looking line if instead you put your eyes where you want it to go and then magically oh I have a beautiful line and um it just goes a lot smooth smoother try it it works okay now I'm going to start to get sort of the shape of the middle of the peacock feather so um this is the center part of the feather so that's going to go up into a shape Kind of like this. 
And one of the reasons we're using blue is that if our lines aren't totally perfect, they're just gonna blend right into the background and it'll be a really easy fix. Rather than, I wouldn't wanna do probably like really dark black outlines yet because um, then they, they're gonna show up a lot. And if I mess up, it's, that's gonna also show up a lot. So this is just less, less pressure. Okay. And this is gonna make kind of a pointy shape here. Yep. Um, and then on the side of that, there's kind of another shape. And again, I'm not trying to make it perfect. I'm just getting a general idea of where things go. Okay, that's gonna become pointy at the top a little bit. Yep. And then on the inside, there's some more shapes happening. There's a round kind of oval like shape here. And then inside that, it's almost like a little lily pad, the eye inside the peacock feather, just so we have an idea of where to stop and start. And again, it does not have to be perfect at this point, just kind of some general guidelines. Okay, so that's gonna let me know where to stop and start each of the different colors. And then um, the rest of it, we're gonna wanna freehand. So we can stop there with our outline. Um, the next thing what we, we, what we want to do um, is mix up our different colors for our different feathers. Um, so let's get some more colors on our palette that we can mix up. I already have some blue. I already have my black. I'm going to need um, some yellow, even though I don't have yellow on the peacock feather. Um, I will want it for making some greens <clears throat> and turquoises. Okay, um, so let's mix some colors. I already have my light blue there. I might need a little bit more of it. So some white with the blue. It's going to make that light blue color. I also need kind of a medium blue, which, you know, the blue right out of the bottle is probably going to be pretty good for that. I want um, kind of a light limey green. So for that, I'm going to want some white, let's see, can you see my plate here? Okay, some white, a little bit of blue, a little yellow, and then just kind of notice what's happening and adjust. That's actually a pretty good kind of chartreuse lime green. I like how that looks. Um, I would like a turquoise as well. So I'll take some blue, little yellow, little white. Yeah, that looks good. And then we got turquoise. It look like that. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, I think I'm ready to paint some peacock feathers. Okay. All right, so I believe I will start with uh, this shape out here is pretty fun. As I'm painting edges of things, um, I like to lay the brush down, bristles down, and just kind of slide, slide the bristles. Um, we'll make a nice clean edge. So I'm mostly just kind of filling in that sort of outliney shape that we made just a little bit ago. Mm -hmm. I'll do this, this side too with this turquoise color. And if you'd like to, it to look darker, you can go there. If you'd like it to look greener, you can go there as well. Whatever your personal preference is.
Okay. All right. While we have that color, I'm going to get some feathers, feathers going with that as well. Um, so for those, I want to go really organic, kind of follow, follow this bend. So we'll go here, up, and I'll just do once I fill in a color. I'm just gonna add a few more of, of that color to some other places while, while I still have it because acrylic paint just dries very quickly. And you can run out of colors pretty fast because they dry. And if you see your paint kind of going spotty or chunky, that means you need water. So as you're painting, if it's not looking so hot, it's probably because of water. Water is needed. All right, so I wanna do a few more with this color, a few different spots. Kind of along each side. So I'm going Try to be sort of organic with this. Curved lines that kind of go with the curve that we did up at the top. Okay. I want at least one more, maybe two. Okay. Right, for now, that looks pretty good with the teal. Let's move on to another color and, you know, we can reassess and if it needs more of it, we can always add it later. Um, let's go to our blue blue, um, which is probably just your blue straight out of the bottle, most likely. Um, for the true blue, that is the color that we'll find on this middle eye section of the peacock feather. So we had already outlined the shape initially when we did our light blue outlines that let us know where it goes and the general shape that it needs to be. And then we can come in and fill it in with out of the bottle blue. Need a little bit more. Here we go. I'm gonna keep dunking my brush in water to help my paint um, apply neatly how I want it to. Okay. So on the actual eye of the feather, that is where it goes. Um, and then we need to add some to the outside. So we'll do that. And while you're adding this blue, kind of um, just make sure that it doesn't blend in with your background too much. If it does, then you add either black or white, depending on uh, what you see happening. Um, if you had a really dark background, 
then probably blue out of the bottle will still show up. If it blends in too much and you can't see it, just add a little bit white and um, that'll adjust the contrast so that you'll be able to see it. So same like I did with my turquoise, or I guess it's teal. Um, just every so often, I'm just gonna add some feathers with it. Here, there, everywhere. Here. Just like we talked about with the background, you'll notice that I'm moving from my shoulder and I'm pressing my bristles against the canvas and dragging. Once I get to the end where I want it pointy, then I'll use more of just the point of the brush. I feel like this middle part needed one more layer. So once it gets dry to the touch, that's when you can always add another layer of paint wherever it might need it. Alrighty. Um, next, I think I'll do my lime green. That's a fun color to add. So I mixed that up already. I just washed out my brush and then uh, I'm using the water from the brush to just kind of thin out the paint so that it spreads nice and easily. Okay. So I need some up at the top too, I'm noticing. Next color I need is my light blue, which I already have mixed up on my plate. Okay, and that is the color that goes on this part of the eye and the peacock feather. So since I want my edge to be nice and clean and not all jaggedy crazy, I am laying down those bristles and dragging it so that my edge looks clean. Just like that. 
And then I can uh, fill in the rest of that shape. Alrighty. I think we're ready for black next. So rinse out that brush and then scooch over a little bit of your black from your palette. Black especially can get kind of chunky um, and thick for whatever reason. So whenever I need to make lines with black, I like to really thin it out with some water on my brush just like that. Um, and here's where I will start to define things a bit more. I want that center line to go. And as I was doing that, I had to remind myself, self, don't watch the line, put the eyes where you want it to go. And it will go so much smoother. It's amazing. I'll just kind of go through and wherever I think it needs a little oomph or contrast, I'll add some black lines. Okay, and we're using water. I'll do a little bit at the top too. Okay. Now you might notice um, on here and on a regular peacock feather, there's usually kind of a tannish golden color that's on there for part of it. Um, for those shapes, I like to use this little magic guy. Um, this is some metallic gold acrylic paint. And it just looks really nice with the blues and greens that we have on there. So just a tiny little bit of this um, will do the trick. And I'm gonna take a little bit of a larger brush now and this shape right here, that's going to get filled in with gold. So edges first is a good practice. Edges first so that we can make sure that those are nice and clean. Okay, so we'll fill in that shape. 
And then from there, we can add just little hints of it throughout, throughout the painting for the rest of the feathers. Okay. Now you'll notice my brush, it's kind of a fatter, wider brush. How are you getting such a clean line with such a fat, wide brush? It's because instead of holding it this way, I'm holding it this way and I'm using the skinny side of it. And I'll be a little I guess more sparse with where I put the gold. Um, too much would probably be just too much, but I can just put a little bit here and there. That's a lot. Yeah. I'm feeling like outlining this shape with gold. It feels like it needs some more contrast. Okay. on any ends that are bugging you. Um, you can just take a skinny brush and touch those up um, with any of the various colors. Um, just kind of keep looking at it and determine, you know, does this part need a few more lines or maybe it just needs contrast. Adding, adding those darks with the black will help a lot. Um, Try a few different brushes to really get that that wispy feather like look. I like I like the skinny pointy brushes. Um, sometimes for lines, like I said, a a flat brush held the skinny way um, works well. I also really enjoy these little angled brushes. Um, if anyone does their eyeliner with the angled brush. Um, they know that they work so good for lines or eyebrows too, you know, but they do have angled brushes for paint as well. And they're really nice for the lines. Um, it's kind of just all about um, getting that organic, smooth, smooth curve, which um, just might take a little bit of practice. You can practice on a piece of newspaper or scrap paper, just kind of practice moving from the shoulder, getting those wispy lines, you might try holding your brush different angles, um, it makes a big difference. Also how hard you push makes a difference. Um, start by pushing down a little bit harder and then as you get to the end, kind of loosen your pressure so that it tapers and gets skinnier on the end. It'll be a more natural um, feathered curve if you do it that way. Um, but I hope you have fun painting your feather. Um, play around with the colors a little bit, use more of the colors you like the best, maybe less of colors you don't like as much. Um, feel free to change the background so that um, it fits your taste. Paint those sides and don't forget to sign it before you hang it up. Thanks everyone. Happy painting.